What's good, fam? To combat the doom scrolling today, we're gonna be learning calculus. All right, sure. It's a negative Riz topic. So to really make it relatable for you funk listening, Sigma Male Grind said is I'm gonna replace mathematical jargon with Gen Z slang. Skibbity get Ohio Rizzler Phantom Tech. The two OGs, Sir Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz, had an idea living rent-free, and it had all to do with curves, right? And they, no cap, made a big brain play to find out how to calculate the slopes and the area of curves. Now, that may seem pretty low-key, but not. If you think about it, squares, you can easily find their area. Just multiply the sides together. Circles, you just multiply half of how thick it is by itself, and then times by good old pi. But what about this shape? You know, skibbity toilet. How do you find that area? You can't. But then the goats went, y'all are just thinking like NPCs, and they whipped out the integral. A definitive integral works by two points on the number line under the curve, plugging them biggest at the top and smallest at the bottom. That's pretty valuable. Quick vibe check and just a bit of a refresher on functions, the OK boomer of math. A function works by plugging in an input and getting one output. Just like how a Karen receives normal customer service as an input, processes that information, and then for the output they yell to the manager. Now, then I set the input to a next coordinate and do the 200 IQ shenanigans. It'll Uber the respective Y coordinate straight to your doorstep. No need to rate them 5 stars because it'll give you the precise answer every time. If you're looking to find the shape of a graph, that is. So, I won't yap any further about functions, but when you use them in integrals, mwah, it just hits different, bro. Ya boy, Isaac and Gottfried understood the assignment. Functions describe what the curve looks like, so you chuck that in front of the integral, and now the whole equation just had a massive glow up. Now, the integral has ups, the derivative, but the W thing is, they ain't no cancel culture, and in fact, they're really important for each other, but, but not like besties. So to finish off the integral's drip, you gotta take the input variable and slap on a D. Now it's sorta like an antiderivative, but not completely, because otherwise it'd be referring to Definite integral, okay, actual math mathematicians, are we good? We chill? Alright. At the moment, the notation looks kinda wacky, but real quick, you're about to have a bra moment. Take the exponent, add one to it, then dupe it, divide the thing by that number, then copy and paste the whole thing and subtract it from the original one. And remember, those bots sitting there, they were doing nothing, they were actually the imposters among us the whole time. Vent them to x's, and now, perform the basic arithmetic and boom, you just gotta go. That's it. That's the area under the curve. Something you probably thought was once impossible as you were listening to your mukbang ASMR. Now, that's only one part of differential calculus. Another part, and this guy is the main character syndrome, the derivative. Right. Now I waffled about this homie just a bit ago, but now I want to show you how much of a top G this dude really is. A line? It's literally just two points, the distance between them is shaded in. Well, how does this increase? Like, as you run your finger along it, how much does it go up by? Now, instead of an L plus ratio, this is just a normal ratio. The ratio between the X and the Y lengths of the line. But, what do I mean by lengths? Doesn't a line have no width and it's just, well, a line? WRONG! <laughs> you just took a fat L. Tono. If you draw another straight line, down from the high end until it's parallel with the lower one, and then connect those together, look what we have here, a Dorito chip, right? The difference in the length of the chip is just that point minus this point, because it's the difference between them. Here's the out-of-pocket thing, if you do the same with the difference in the Y, and now divide them by each other, you get the slope, the relationship that describes the sum of rate of climb and rate of change of direction. In non-Ohio terms, it's how steep or curved the line is. But hold up, if you want to know the steepness of a curve, that ain't it, chief. Because a curve is non-linear. It's not a line. And this rise of a run thing only applies to lines. So, there was a bit of clapback towards Euclid about this discovery, even though it slaps. So, the Rizzlers, Isaac and Gotti, but... <laughs> what? So the Rizzlers, Isaac and Gotti, came up with the Una reverse card of a move. A curve is just made up of lines. If we zoom... I get it. Like, like, generation, like, g generation service. If we zoom in on a part of a curve, it's nearly perfectly straight. So they went up and typed their ideas on Google and found they were the only ones that came up with it. I mean, sort of. And, like, a bunch of dudes from back in the day also thought of it, but, like, they didn't really have the clout. Anyway, the basic idea behind the first principles is that you use something called a limit. 
which is like you start with no social credit because your look is just horrendous but as you increase your swagger your appearance becomes way more snatched right? but eventually you pass a threshold then you're just over the top with your drip and you look mad horrendous again it's the same thing for a limit it gives you a number that represents how the people on tiktok view you up to a certain extent this extent is when the equation stops working that's its limit now imagine instead of drip it's the steepness of a curve as you make the rise of a run equation limited to a really small range it only applies to what looks like a line for real this stuff kind of confusing sure but it's real useful in maths and science and engineering so we've talked about the facts the integral for finding area under the curve and the derivative for finding the steepness of a curve these are the basics of calculus. And now you know it's pretty simple. If you want to get your friends out of the YouTube short scrolling pit and actually start learning something about math and science, ping your friends with this video. And I hope you enjoy. This is like the worst script I've ever written.